Okay, so the topic that we'll be talking about is harmonic analysis on metric graphs. There are many ways of doing analysis on metric graphs. For example, one can also take on the more tropical approach. Think of a metric graph as a tropical, finite metric graph as a tropical curve. So basically, consider that as a limiting case of some Riemann surface and try to do complex analysis there. But instead of doing that, we are just going to do the more classical approach of a uh, graph harmonic functions and graph harmonic one forms. Uh, firstly, let's recall the definition of graph harmonic functions and one forms. Uh, firstly, by a metric graph, we just be, mean a simplicial graph where each edge is associated with a positive uh, real number. So we just identify every edge, so every one cell in this simplicial graph with a finite interval. Uh, so here by simplicial graph, we just mean a uh, one complex. So like some points and then some one cells where the endpoints are glued to the points. And uh, if we have a metric graph, uh, we can consider piecewise linear continuous functions on metric graphs. So here piecewise linear just means like piecewise linear on when we look at, when we restrict that to every one cell or every edge. So in that case, we can define the concept of Laplacian of a piecewise linear function. So that's defined, that can be defined as follows. So if you look at all the endpoints of the linear pieces, so all the places where the function is no longer linear, which includes all the vertices. So if we consider this uh, discrete sets, we can consider the consider a linear combination of delta measures concentrated on those axes, uh, on all those numbers, uh, on those points x, such that the coefficients can be calculated as follows. So for every such a point x, we consider all the edges associated to that point, and we uh, give them orientation as all heading outwards starting at x. Then the sum of the slopes of this piecewise linear function on those edges would just be the coefficients. So for example, if we have the function uh, which takes on some value 0 at some point, and it is piecewise linear on three outgoing edges, all have length 1, and the other endpoints of the three outgoing edges, uh, at the other endpoints of the three outgoing edges, this function uh, all have value one. Then the slopes uh, of along these three edges will all be one. So the coefficients will just be three. So there will be a three delta v there. And uh, as we can see uh, easily, that if we if the metric graph is finite and also connected then any piecewise linear function has zero Laplacian on the graph if and only if the function is a constant function. Also, we can define the concept of graph harmonic function as a function where the Laplacian equals zero. And we can also define a piecewise linear function to be harmonic in some open subset of the graph if the Laplacian, when restricted to that open subset, equals zero. So once we ha yeah, as we can see, like if the metric graph is finite, then it has to be constant. Uh, then a uh, graph harmonic function has to be constant on each kinetic component. On the other hand, for infinite metric graphs, there can be non-trivial graph harmonic functions. So uh, related to the definition of graph harmonic functions, we can also define the concept of. Uh, graph harmonic one forms. So it is just locally the derivative of some graph harmonic function. Oh, here we just mean a function that's harmonic in that like open subset. For example, uh, if we have a circle, so we think about this graph as just having one vertex and one edge, then we can have the constant uh, one form on the circle. So that's a graph harmonic function. Uh, that's a graph harmonic one form. So even though that's not the 
a derivative of any graph harmonic function. It is locally the derivative of some piecewise linear function that's harmonic locally. So because of what we, uh, we yeah, it, it is clear that like if we have some edge of a metric graph, then any graph harmonic function has to be like uh, any fun uh, piecewise linear function that is harmonic in the interior of that edge has to be just a linear function on that edge. So because of that, we know that any graph harmonic one form has to be constant on every edge. And then if we have some vertex, for example, if we have some vertex with three outgoing edges, and then if we assign orientations to the uh, if you have a vertex associated to, to three edges and then we assign orientation as outgoing for like starting at that point and then heading outwards. And along these three edges, uh, the one forms are say ADX, BDX, and CDX. Then A, B, and C, these three numbers are just slopes of a piecewise linear continuous function along these three edges. And because of that, we know that if we have a if that this one form is graph harmonic, then we have a plus b plus c equals zero. So as we can see from the previous example of a circle, uh, even though there are no trivial, there are no non-trivial uh, graph harmonic functions on finite metric graphs, uh, there can be non-trivial graph harmonic function, uh, graph harmonic one forms even on a connected finite metric graph. And actually, there's something called, uh, yeah, basically as an analogy of Hodge theorem, uh, Hodge theorem, which says that like any uh, real coefficient, uh, one cochain on a finite metric graph can be uniquely represented by a graph harmonic one form. So the space of graph harmonic one form is just canonically isomorphic to the uh, first cohomology of the metric graph, while well, in the case where the metric graph is finite, yeah, it is. It will be uh, isomorphic to the first cohomology of the metric graph with real coefficients. So yeah, why do we care about these uh, graph harmonic functions and graph harmonic one forms? All these are definitions dating back to a long time ago. Uh, I think they arise from graph theory, but they also have many applications in physics and also in yeah, basically yeah, in combinatorics in physics and also in like uh, numerics. For example, when we would try to uh, do numerical calculations. Uh, this could be like a way of analyzing how good a mesh could be. And yeah, based on this, uh, so uh, in particular, in terms of applications, uh, connections with physics, like a classical uh, connection is with Kirchhoff's law of electrical network. So we can think about essentially a graph harmonic function as a function of electrical potential. And then, uh, a graph harmonic one form as the currents, electrical currents. Yeah, so because of that connection, we can relate the calculation of resi effective resistance between two points on a resistor network with uh, the concept of graph harmonic one sh functions and graph harmonic one forms. So if we if we have a finite metric graph, we can think about this as a model of some resistor network. So like the effect, the resistance of every edge. Also for every edge, we just re, uh, can relate that with a resistor, and the resistance of that resistor will just be the length of the edge. Now if we have two points on a finite metric graph, we can consider piecewise linear function such that the Laplacian will equals delta of the first point minus delta of the second point. And then we take the difference of this piecewise linear function at, second, at the second point and the first point. So that difference is called the effective resistance between these two points. Yeah, oh, by the way, here, of course, we require the finite metric graph to be connected. Uh, otherwise, like such an f cannot be found. And 
Yeah, uh, as we can see, because uh, the if we have two different functions f and g, both satisfy the condition that delta of x, like Laplacian of x equals delta x minus delta y, Laplacian of g equals delta x minus delta y, then f minus g will be harmonic on this uh, metric graph. So they will just be, uh, and this metric graph is connected, so it has to be a constant. So in other words, this concept of effective resistance is well defined. So once we have this effective resistance function, we can uh, define the concept of, uh, we, we can define a quadratic form on the space of uh, signed meshes on this finite metric graph. So this quadratic form can, de can be defined as follows. So we can just uh, integrate the effective resistance function with respect to this signed measure in both the x and the y coordinates. And if we have a signed measure, which has volume one and maximizes this quadratic form among all signed measures with volume one, then we call this signed measure an equilibrium measure. And we say that, uh, the, yeah, so now we have this concept of equilibrium measure on a, a metric graph. And then uh, we can do some further definitions so instead of considering equilibrium measure on the whole metric graph, we can we can have a concept of equilibrium measures that are supported on some closed subsets. So the idea is that instead of thinking about all the sign measures on the metric graph, we only look at the sign measures where the support is a subset of some closed subset of the graph G. So those are and then take the and then require that the total volume equals one and take the one that maximizes this quadratic form. And we can also do similar thing if we uh, restrict uh, the measures that we are considering to measures that are like not really sign measures, but actual measures. So the non-negative measures and also require that the volume to be one. So those are the non-negative equilibrium measures. So it can be shown that both of these exist and both of these have a so and there's an algorithm to calculate both uh the equilibrium measures with some uh support and also non-negative equilibrium measures. So this is a result that that will be posted in an upcoming paper by uh Faber, Harry and me. Oh and uh so there are many names of uh, for this equilibrium measure, so sometimes people call it canonical measures, and sometimes they also call it, for example, Akilov measures. So there are some motivations why people call it those names. One motivation is that, like, uh, just like Akilov measures, we can also relate that to uh, harmonic one forms. So if we consider a finite metric graph, and then we have an edge, the equilibrium measure applied to the interior of that edge. Oh, by the way, the equilibrium measure will be uh, some constant, non-negative constant multiples of the Lebesgue measure when restricted to the interior of edges, and there will be negative delta measures at the vertices. So if we just ignore the vertices and only look at the edges and look at one given edge and then evaluate the equilibrium measure to the interior of that edge. So we can, there's a formula to calculate that uh, number. So we can think of, uh, we can calculate that number as follows. Look at all the harmonic one forms where the L2 norm is less than or equal to one. And then just evaluate that harmonic one form on the edge, take a square, divide by the length of the edge, and then take a supremo. So that will be the, this number. And this is a, a this result as well as many other ways of calculating equilibrium measures, uh, have it, can be found in uh, many places. For example, yeah, there's some there's an old paper called canonical pair uh, admissible pairings on a curve, like by Shi Wu Zhang. But there's a more comprehensive introduction in a paper titled uh, "Harmonic Analysis on Metrized Graph" by. Baker and Ramley.
so yeah, some applications of these concepts. Uh, of course, these concepts have motivations from physics, but like there are also some connections between these concepts with combinatorics. So yeah, just in the paper that's right after the development of Kirchhoff's law, Kirchhoff showed that there's a way of uh, relating these equilibrium measures to spanning tree counting. So the idea is that if we have a uh, if we have a, a finite graph where all the edges have length one, then uh, the equilibrium measure on every edge can be evaluated, uh, can be calculated by uh, counting the number of spanning trees that does not contain the edge divided by the total number of spanning trees of a graph. And if we have a metric graph, so the edge lengths are not necessarily one, then we can relay equilibrium measure with what we call the weighted spanning tree counting. So here the weight of a spanning tree will just be the product of the lengths of edges that are not on the tree. So yeah, in the case where all edge has length one, the weights will just be constant and always one. Generalizing this result, Harry Richman, Farbot, and I uh, Po uh, uh, shown uh, in a recently posted paper that there's a way to relay uh, the equilibrium measure where, where the support is restricted to only the vertices with uh, spanning tree and spanning two forest counting. So this result is not, we are, we, for this one we don't really have the weighted version, so we require that the uh, graph to have uh, edges of uh, we, we, uh, we require the graph satisfy the property that all edges have length one. But yeah, there's a way to relay some linear combination between number of spanning trees and spanning fo two forests with this equilibrium, uh, with the volume of this equilibrium measure. Oh, so the quadratic one form evaluated, a uh, quadratic form evaluated on this equilibrium measure. And lastly, uh, there's a way to uh, well, yeah, and uh, beyond this, we also have some other applications in upcoming papers where we restrict ourselves to uh, metric graphs that are trees and relating uh, and then look at some uh, certain number of points on the tree and then relate the equilibrium measure with where the support is restricted to those points with the minus of distance function of on those uh, distance matrix at those points. And uh, yeah, so earlier we said that there are many ways of doing geometry and analysis on metric graphs. And there's, for example, the tropical approach. Well, there's some connection between this equilibrium measure, which is defined using this like more classical approach with the tropical approach. So if we consider like a finite metric graph as a tropical curve, so as the tropicalization of some Riemann surface, then we can just push the concept of wave thrust points to the con to these tropical curves and get what we call the tropical wave thrust points. And then we can show that equilibrium measure where with the atoms are the vertices removed are related to the Equal this like limiting distribution of tropical wave stress points. So here we consider a lamp bundle, an ample lamp bundle, and then just take high power of the lamp bundle. So uh, this one was given a more algebraic proof by Omini, but like Richmond, uh, uh, Harry Richmond has a more geometrical proof for this fact, and also prove it in a more general setting, uh, like slightly more general setting. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, so the, there's, there's also like an analogous uh, connection between like lamp bundles and like tropical lamp bundles and non-negative uh, uh, non equilibrium measure as well as with equilibrium measures where, uh, with some restriction, like restricted on some closed subsets. Okay, so uh, yeah, all these are uh, results that are done in finite metric graphs. 
for infinite metric graphs, we can actually define a do a lot of this analogously. So for example, if we have an infinite metric graph, we can consider L2 integrable harmonic one forms. And then also like uh, functions where the derivatives are L2 integrable harmonic one forms. So basically L2 integrable harmonic one forms and their integrals. And if we replace harmonic one forms with L2 integrable harmonic one forms and piecewise linear functions with like L, uh, functions where the derivatives are L2 integrable, then we can define all the concepts that are defined earlier. And so in particular, we can define the an, uh, define analogous concept for effective resistance and also equilibrium measures. So, all, of course, here the equilibrium measure cannot be required to have like total weight one, but like we can just yeah the weights are generally going to be infinite. But it is uh, defined well defined if we like we're uh, up to a scaling basically. And by making use of this definitions and also by making use of Lux approximation theorem, we can actually show that if we have a finite metric graph and then we have a sequence of regular covers of that finite metric graphs that are larger, like, larger and larger and then all the covers are regular covers, then all the equilibrium measures, so the normal equilibrium measure, the equilibrium measure where we restrict the support to the uh, restrict the support to a come a closed subset and also the non-negative equilibrium measure. So so all of them de that are defined like earlier have a well-defined limit. Uh, so basically, yeah, they, they 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 will all have a limit. So this is just a consequence of Lux approximation theorem. Uh, it's uh, put by Farbot uh, Farbot and me. So in terms of some further questions, uh, at the moment, uh, we are thinking about two questions related to uh, graph harmonic analysis. So the first question is that, like, there's some analogy of uh, the canonical measure on the case of Riemann, in the case of Riemann surface. So these are like just the Archelov measure essentially, and then yeah, we also know that when we go to a covering, then these measures will just uh, we, we, and then these measures will just uh, be pushed to essentially the metric that will give us the uh, they are the uniformization uh, uniformizing metric if we push to the universal cover. So yeah, basically this gives us a way to do discrete uniformization. But on the yeah the, on the other hand, it is not obvious how one can define the concept of uh for example non-negative measures like what the analogy of non-negative measure or the analogy of like uh, equilibrium measures with some controlled support in the setting of uh, Riemann surfaces. Because if we define like naively, like doing effective resistance, then yeah, we will have infinity when we are doing the integration. So yeah, we need some other approach to generalize that and then a question would be like whether or not there's an analogy for those two measures in the setting of Riemann surfaces and what kind of applications can we have in terms of Riemann surfaces, whether or not we can get any algebraic or like geometrical property from those measures. So another question is a fairly well-defined question, but this is related to like looking at L2 like harmonic analysis in another setting. So if we have a trend trend map, so here by trend trend map, we just mean like a map that is a combination of a sequence of foldings. And then we also require that the all the edges are uniformly expanding. So yeah, we assign edge length so that the edge length, uh, so that all the edges are uniformly expanding in this map, uh, in this self map from a finite metric graph to itself, which is a homotopy equivalence. So yeah, because it's a homotopy equivalence, we can leave it to a universal cover. And then there will be induced map on the space of L2 harmonic one forms, which is a Hilbert space. Uh, we know that, of course, the spectral radius of this 
Hilbert of this uh, map on this Hilbert space will be less than or equal to uh, the stretch factor. So basically, yeah, basically the uh, yeah, I, yeah, the spectral yeah, uh, this is like similar to what we know in the finite case, and then yeah, because the spectral radius is bounded by the norm, essentially because of that. On the other hand, the question is when is the spectral radius equals the stretch factor? So in the case of uh, Riemann surfaces, this is a uh, result by uh, Kamakmolen uh, many decades ago. On, yeah, the question is, what would be the analogous result in the case of graphs and infinite trees? But this is a, another question that we are currently investigating. So at the moment, we have seen many examples where these two are equal, but we don't really know like what's the actual. And also, yeah, the, there are some criteria that says when they are equal. But then the question is whether or not there's even one example where these two quantities are not equal. Okay, so these are all the things that I have prepared.